Looking back on San Jose, I, I thought we played really, really well. Um, played extremely hard. Had several instances where subbing guys out because of fatigue, because they were playing so hard. Um, you know, so just an overall great performance on the road. Um, obviously playing good basketball. And uh, now we got to turn the page to a Nevada team that broke our heart twice last year. And we've got guys um, who were on that team. You know, obviously a team that went to the NCAA tournament. And, uh, you know, Lucas and Blackshear are as good as any two players uh, we will face. So a great challenge. Um, excited to be back home, you know, in front of our amazing fans. And uh, got a great opportunity coming up on Sunday night. Their team that in, in mentioning both their guards, I mean, Lucas obviously is a more, I guess, traditional maybe um, shooting guard, but Blackshear being a huge uh, point for them and backing you down, you guys haven't faced a whole lot of big guards that back you down, and I think that's what people in general think would be your weakness with uh, three small guards. Uh, have you faced anything quite like Blackshear on quite this, this season so far that you can compare it to? I don't think so. Um... He's kind of evolved in Maldonado a little bit, you know. I mean, they're they're doing some similar things to when Maldonado was there two years ago. No, he was there last year. Um, so some guys on the team have faced a big guard like that, um, you know. So there's some similarities there. There's not a lot of similarities this year, um, for sure, with anybody that we've played. So it's a a tough challenge. Is there something you guys see from what you did with him last year? or tried to defend him last year that you're going to, you know, change you on the whole play? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> hell of a question. Uh, I mean, every time you play a team, um, you look back at last year, what you did well, what you didn't do well, and see if maybe there's something you could do different. So, I mean, that that's going to be normal uh, with every team that we play and uh, see if we can certainly do a better job and see what weaknesses we can expose. The, the pressure that you guys are playing, though, in general, is a little different than last year, and, and maybe that's part of it, right? It's not just on Black year, it's on everybody that you guys are Yeah, playing. I mean, you're going to have to make a decision of who's going to guard him, but they got they got some bigger guards, too, besides, you know, Lucas is, like you said, more of a traditional guard, but, um, you know, I mean, it, it's we'll have to work over the next two days on uh, what we think may work, a, a counter to if it's not working, kind of go from there. I think the last four games, all double-digit victories, and even at San Jose State, all your starters double digits that night as well. This kind of consistency, where does that come from, or how have you guys been, how's you been able to do that? Um, well, I mean, it, it certainly started with San Diego State and Utah State, and I think that momentum uh, certainly has got our guys playing very confidently. You'd love to see that momentum last all the way into March. Obviously, that's not going to be the case. Um, you know, there's going to be bumps in the road, but I think they're practicing hard. I think they're they're confident, um, you know, and they should be. They're playing really well right now. So we got to make sure we, we see what that formula is, um, whether it's a defensive intensity, whether it's blocking shots, whether it's balance offensively, and, and continue to stay the course. Coach, I'm just curious. I mean, I have people – asking me about this matchup and who cares what people say, but I mean, have you noticed that they, this is a big time matchup for the fans and um, have you noticed just people even talking to you about this matchup? No, not really. Not to me, the whole who was the coach here before thing. I, I don't know. I, I kind of feel like it's going away a little bit. Uh, I hope it is not, not for anyone's sake, really. I mean, I think our last two home games were two ranked teams uh, now we've got a Nevada team that's really, really good, and then we've got a Boise State team really good. So uh, for me and anyone I've really talked to, I think it's more so about that than Steve Alford coaching here, Craig Neal coaching here. Um, and I, I would hope that at some point we can move past that, but people don't always seem to do that. You know, the, Nelly has it's, he's got this weird ability to create turnovers at the top of the key. It's, it's, is that something that is just a matchup for him where he's just quick-handed? I mean, we've talked all day about Jalen House, but that's something he's been doing all year. He's really good at it. He's really good at it. And um, he had one on the sideline by our bench at San Jose where he just shot the gap, got the steal. He had one on a hedge on a ball screen opposite their bench. Um, he obviously had a kind of a game-winning one uh, at New Mexico State. So 
that's one of the reasons why we change kind of our ball screen scheme is because he's pretty good at that. And um, I think he had four steals last game, which is great. Uh, so we want him to certainly continue to be aggressive in that situation. You mentioned it in your opening statement, but the two heartbreakers last year. Have you kind of maybe heard, I'm sure it's not you leading the charge, but the players in the locker room who, who were here last year, is it sort of on their mind and the fuel that coming into this matchup? I don't, you know, I don't know. I mean, I think they remember it. It was uh, at their place. We had it. Obviously, um, the one here was a little bit more uh, heartbreaking because it's shot at the buzzer. So I'm sure Mash and uh, House and Donovan and Quentin and Braden and Sebastian probably are talking about it. But it's got nothing really to do with this year, similar to San Diego State getting us last year at the buzzer. So uh, we kind of focus on what we can c- control, uh, learn from if we made mistakes or what we did well, and kind of go from there. Speaking of changing the defensive scheme with Nelly coming off the uh, ball screens and stuff, do you feel like anything else has changed with um, the intensity of defense? It looks like communication has been kind of up too the last few games. Yeah, I mean, I think if you look at our team this time last year, we started 18 and 2. And um, I was asked today on the radio about that. And while we were sitting there 18 to 2, we had St. Mary's and San Diego State road wins in our back pocket. Uh, I think the difference is a defensive identity. Um, I think we have a level of confidence that we'll be able to score if we play the right way. But I think all the things that we recognized about last year's shortcomings, uh, we may have addressed with recruiting as well as Guys understanding that, you know, that's what we need to elevate. We've done that. So I think that level of confidence um, for sure is there more so than last year on the defensive side of it. As a follow-up to kind of the Nelly and the defensive kind of communication, all that, Nelly hedging as much as he does leaves a, an opening that you guys have been able to avoid, I guess, you know, having them exposed. And I thought a couple times they, they could have at San Jose State and weren't able to. Are you guys doing something a little different to make sure – you know, that big man doesn't just wide open, run towards the rim. Well, Nelly's way out there. yeah, it's all connected. Um, if you're going to commit two to the basketball, the other three guys are just as important as two that are on the ball, where I think Nelly is very good at it. So that one helps. Um, but if you leave that dive guy vulnerable, the other guys have got to do their part. Um, we, we, we weren't perfect in that at San Jose. There was a couple times we got a little bit screwed up on some rotations. Um but it's been pretty good for us so far. So we do drill it, and it's just as important to the off-ball guys as the on-ball guys. You guys have been better scrambling just in general. For sure. Why is that? How do you get better at scrambling? Well, we're scrambling more because we are putting two on the ball. So uh, the scheme is, uh, is causing us to scramble a little bit more, and that's fine. You know, I mean, there's kind of a movement of – not wanting to scramble in basketball, you know, be in a drop coverage, play one-on-one defense, um, where we've kind of gotten away from that. And, you know, I, I wrote on the board several times last game and said it embraced the scramble, whether that's you helped and you got to recover or you got to rebound out of a scramble uh, and so on. So we, we've certainly been covering for each other better. You, uh, you said something interesting with Rob doing that after the game, how when the game is tight, the guys tend to slow down a little. I'm just curious, is that just the fact that you're in a tight game and guys don't want to make mistakes or be more cautious? Yeah, I think what – I don't remember why I said that, but I think the point is we're trying to run on makes. And we had some phenomenal moments at San Jose of getting the ball in quick, pitching it up to Donovan, hitting up ahead and doing that. Um, Maybe it's they're looking down at me because they're going the other way in the second half. Uh, but I want to continue to play at that great pace regardless of what the score is, up 10, down 10, whatever. Um, and that's something we've we've talked about. And it, there are times, for sure, where you can't get it out cleanly and get it up the court where you need to slow down and run a set. Uh, but I do think we've had some great offensive outputs because we've been pushing the pace. Is there a team that is, I think, top 10 today? I think um, free throw rate, you know, they get to the line a lot. You guys are, are fouling a lot with this defense um, in general. Um, not last game. Not last game. Uh, so for the most part, when you guys have been at your best, you've been able to defend this way without fouling. Is there a, a concern or is there any back off going against a team that relies so much on the free throw line and is good at getting there? No, I mean, 
we're never we're never telling guys to foul. So you know, we're, we're we we want to be aggressive, but we don't want to foul. Um, I thought we showed that last game. They only shot five free throws. So I mean, you know, Lucas does a great job of getting fouled. Uh, Blackshire does a great job of getting fouled. So over the next two days, we will prepare to play the way we want to, but in a fundamental within the rules of the game type style. Um, as far as affecting our prep, I think, I mean, we, we were going to learn from, you know, what happened last year, how we defended them, how, um, how we scored against them. Um, and, uh, but we, we don't need no extra motivation, you know, for this game, just because, um, you know, we, we haven't won, we haven't beaten this team. So, uh, our preparations is, you know, going to be the same as any other Mountain West team. Every Mountain West team is dangerous in this conference. So, um, we're going to go ahead and prepare about it for today and we'll get better. How tough was that two game road trip that you guys just went on? Because you're playing, you go from this environment to mm-hmm. playing in front of buildings that don't have a lot of life in them. Uh, it's exciting. I mean, we, we've, we've been uh, big on creating our own energy and just creating our own, um, you know, identity and just being together and being with each other. So um, it's exciting. We're excited to get the pit bag rocking, um, you know, in this big stretch of games coming up in January and February. So we're excited. Nash, you guys are running a lot of momentum right now in these last four games. What changed, do you think, on the court, San Diego State versus to how you guys are playing now? I would say, honestly, we've just, we've attacked practice, uh, you know, the right way. Um, we're talking to each other the right way. I would say, you know, the big difference is just our connectivity on the court. I mean, we're all talking to each other. Like, we're, you know, we're all going to make mistakes. Um, but it's about talking through those mistakes and saying the right things to each other. So I think we're doing that um, at a tremendous level right now. So if we can keep doing that, keep connected, and um, keep the spirit of the team, uh, you know, well, I think we'll be just fine. You guys are in the thick of conference right now. As a competitor, what's your favorite part of playing in conference games? Because it's kind of a different level. Hmm, that's a good question. Um, man, I mean, I'm I love playing just games. I mean, even the non-conference for me is 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 great. But I mean. Conference is just – it gives a little bit of a different um, different edge to it just because it's, it's so much meaningful games. Um, you know, we're playing – a lot of teams are playing for March. A lot of teams are playing for championships, and, you know, that's what we're playing for. So, um, you know, as a competitor for me, um, it's great, and this is the best time for basketball for me, and I, I'm having the best time of my life. You guys haven't played a lot of teams with, with really big guards yet this year, and, and obviously that's what you're going to face um, this game. What, what's, what's the adjustment that you – um, personally, and just you guys as three guards that are six two and shorter, um, have to make when you're playing a team with big guards. Uh, guard them. I mean, simple as that. I mean, there ain't no X's and O's for that. I mean, we we're we're out there. We're gonna scrap. We're gonna be tough, and we just gotta guard them. Simple as that. I know you and, and coach have both said this year that if, if you're gonna play a three guard lineup with your guys' height, you guys just have to be scrappy, right? And you guys have to do what you were just saying. Mm-hmm. Have you noticed a difference? Did you guys have to make any adjustment? Because you guys are doing it more than you were last year. Yeah. Um. What 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 changed? Is it Is it just the fact that you have to do it? Uh. Yeah. I mean, we, we got to do it. I mean, in order for us to win, and uh, you know, I think every team who has a good who's a good college basketball team, they have a good guards that can scrap, and whether they're small or not, that doesn't really matter. But that defensive side of the ball is so important. Um. You know, keeping the ball in front, rebounding. Um, and those things we have been doing. So if we continue to do that, uh, we'll be just fine. We'll be just fine. Now going off that, last year's team defensively was vulnerable in some places, but now we're talking about you guys might have one of the best defenses in the country. Mm. Is it just a matter of personnel, or is it a mindset? What, what is the difference between this year and last year? I would say a mindset for sure. I mean, I think uh, this team, since ever since I've gotten here, we've been you know pretty good offensively. Uh, our numbers have always been you know pretty good. Um, but it's the def- defensive end that we really needed to, you know, pick up and rebounding and stuff. And I think the way we've gone about practice this year and how we started um, the summers and just training camp, um, our mindset is definitely focused on defense. You know, we have a lot of offensive-minded guys, but um, if we can just focus that on the defensive end, we'd be, um, you know, we're, we're going to be light years ahead of teams. So kind of go off of that, defense has been kind of the thing the whole season, but I noticed the last few games it looks like, you guys are able to communicate a lot on defense. You guys are covering a lot of things. Mm-hmm. Things look a lot more smooth, it seems. What's been working as of late these last few games? Honestly, I mean, like you said, just the connectivity piece. Uh, we're, we're, we're all connected, man. I mean, we when we hedge a ball screen or when, when our bigs hedge, we know that we need to have backline help, and we do that every single time. 
Um, it's because we practice that. Um, we think we're at our best defensively when we have Nelly out there hedging and he's active and he can get his hands, you know, in the passing lane and stuff. So uh, we've noticed that we're good defensively when he's doing that um, and we're flying around helping each other. So uh, when we're active and, you know, helping each other, that's when we're at our best defensively. So. You know, when you ask Coach about Nelly, uh, specifically with his steals, you don't see a big man creating that, that kind of turnover margin on the outside. What is it about his game that, that allows him to do that. Man, he's um he's athletic. He's uh he's agile. I mean, he's very light on his feet for a six ten, six eleven guy, and uh, he's very good with his hands. I mean, uh, you know, he's been he's able to guard um, guards on the perimeter. I know he, he hasn't really shown that yet, but he can. I mean, he can really sit down and guard, um, you know, a six two guy on the perimeter and make it tough for him. So, uh, he's he's a huge piece for us defensively. Um, interior and, and on the perimeter. Um, like I said, we're at our best when he's hedging ball screens and when he's, um, you know, aggressive and not in foul trouble, obviously. But, um, yeah, he's special in that regard, special. What, what can you tell us about him more personality-wise, you know, in the locker room, on the court when none of us are around mm -hmm. and practice like that? What kind of guys know like? Man, he's a, he's a great dude. I mean, he's just, he's really chill. Um, he's, he's quiet, very quiet demeanor. Um, you know, likes to stay to himself, but... Um, I've been, I've been able to kind of, you know, he's my roommate, so we've been, we've been able to talk and have open dialogue and conversations and, um, you know, share stories about one another. And, you know, he, he has a great story, man. He, he's a, he's a hard worker, um, you know, coming from Iona, he's coming from a tough program, you know, with, with, with Rick and, and, um, so he's a tough kid, man. So, um, there's a lot more that you probably have to ask him for him to open up and I'll let him do that. But I mean, he's a, he's a character, man. He, he's a really good dude. He has a really deep, like kind of hearty laugh Getting him to laugh like he did once. It was just last week. Mm -hmm. it's, just, it's funny to see him laugh because he's like, oh, oh, oh. Yeah. <laughs> Don't talk about the same place. No, yeah, he's funny. He's funny. He's a good dude. The, uh, the talk of being in the top 25, which, I mean, this team is starting to get the national attention that you guys kind of got a little bit last year. I mean, it, it, does, is it, does it change anything when you're in the locker room? Just because maybe it, does it have, allow you guys to puff out your chest a little bit? Not really. I mean, we don't like, man, we were, we, we got in the top 25 last year and then, uh, you know, we lost it, you know, at one point. So we, we don't really care about that, man. We, we know we're going to get talked about. Um, like, like, for example, I remember in the Utah State game, our fans was chanting overrated to them. And I was like, nah, they're not overrated. Like, stop, stop saying that because they're a good team. We just beat them that day. They're, they're a good team, though. They're a really good team. So, I think we have a really good team. We know that from the beginning. Um, we just got to keep being humble about the process. And just keep going. Nash, I wanted to follow up on something I asked you um, after um, a recent game. We saw it. You mentioned communication. Um, the ball screen stuff that you guys are doing, it doesn't happen by accident. You talked about practicing it. But we saw you after a... I don't know, one of those coverages got messed up defensively, and, and while they were shooting free throws, you and House and Nelly were going over the coverage, and then yeah. time out after that, you guys are continuing to talk about that coverage, mm -hmm. and, and it, you know, like you came to a meeting of the minds. How how does that evolve for a team where the communication can be that good, mm -hmm. where you guys don't have egos about it, and you just want to get it right? Yeah, I mean, it starts it starts really with, uh, in our training camp, and in our summers, and uh just how we wanted to go about talking to each other. Um, you know, we're able to have those tough conversations because, you know, we're going to disagree with each other. You know, it's human nature, you know, to disagree with each other. You're not going to agree on everything. So, um, but it's being able to communicate it thoroughly and clearly and be able to talk about it and uh, be able to move on and just uh, get better. That's what we were doing. I mean, we, we, we were up by like, I forgot how many, how many points we were up at that time, but we wanted to get it right. I mean, we know we're playing for something bigger then, you know, what's coming January. I don't know what date it is right now, but we're playing for something bigger. So we want to make sure that we're clear on things and clear on coverages, clear on matchups, schemes, whatever the case may be. So um, we're connected in all areas. Help, help us, how do you feel? You, I mean, you, I think Wednesday looked as smooth and match for light from the previous couple of years as, as I think I've seen you really all year. Mm. Did it feel different to you? Um... Uh, not really. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm holding up. I'm good. I'm, um, you know, I, I, I've been dealing with stuff all year, you know what I'm saying? Whether it be health wise with this, um, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm coming off a little bit of a flu. So I've been, I've been dealing with stuff all year, but that's life. I mean, you're going to have to wake up and 
do things and you know even when we're not feeling like doing it and you're gonna still have to produce so um i'm feeling good so with that question i'm feeling good i think we uh, probably talked about this a little last year and probably the year before but craig neal and steve alford coming in here I, I know that doesn't really affect the players so much but when you're out and about do you ever hear fans just talking about the nevada matchup and specifically Doing that. Uh, sometimes. I mean, I know in the in years previously, they they they've definitely talked about that. Um, last year, I haven't heard much this year, but uh, I know definitely a little bit of talk here and there, but not not much, not much. You think people are past that a little bit? I think so. I think so. I mean, I, I really don't know, honestly. I think so.